this particular segment in the program um, is facilitated by myself, um, but I get the opportunity to engage with a local um, entrepreneur who's done well in my view, been very consistent um, in their entrepreneurial journey. Um, I'd like to call up on stage Mr. Andile Sombondo, who is the founder of Ace Gas. How many people know Ace Gas? You must know him. It's winter now because if you behave a different way, I'm telling Valley Tap. we winter. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause as he comes up to the stage. Nah, but guys, you can do better than that. Since we're turned around, you can do better. <laughs> so just please grab a seat over here. Uh, we'll organize you a mic. You've got that, Petunia, you've got the other mic. The mic. Microphone. So, they, just to, while, while they're getting the mic um, for Putandile, just to give you an idea, Mbawula chat, um, you know, the slow to a fireside chat, um, but it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a part of the conversation where we sit, snog on. You know, we've got a couple of questions that have already been prepared for Putandile, um, just to get to know him, and then we'll then offer a chance to the people in the room to just ask questions. But for us, we've always felt like, you know, it's always great when you are able to pinpoint the person, the journey, the story, so that in your business sort of architecture, you are able to then match it up with individuals that have been able to, you know, run the business consistently and perseverantly in very tumultuous markets. It's long okay, less. So. Uh, so we pretend we don't know you, we don't know about your business. I've never met you, none of us here have never met you, we've never bought gas from you or any of your complimentary services. Like a stranger walking into a new room of people who don't know you. Just introduce us. Um, and what is the business that you run? Um, firstly, uh, greetings to you, Poti. Uh, I would like to greet as well everyone in the room uh, it's a bit hot helping <laughs> you know yeah um, firstly young Andile um, I run a business a uh, ace guess around uh, it's around Isla in fact around Eastern Cape because we're not only here in in, in East London um, but mainly we're based here uh, in Tanzania uh, we started the business in 2006, um, but they registered in 2007. Uh, my main uh, business that I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I was looking for, it was a battery business. I wanted to get into a battery industry. Uh, I've identified an opportunity within the motor industry uh, who supply a battery, in fact, reconditioned batteries. Because at that time, uh, as a young guy, you know, starting up, I was working, and uh, I felt that here is Niji Motor the same Tanzania, and I know batteries are very, very expensive. Uh, so I managed to get uh, a company that was selling a franchise, I was battery doctor back then. Uh, but things didn't go well. Uh, things didn't go well at all. Uh, it fell flat on its face uh, from the infant stages. But um, fate had it, uh, the place that I, 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 I ran or I was using for that, it was my father's uh, building. But it was in a very bad position, uh, condition. So I had to try and put in some money to revamp uh, and, and do my business there. Uh, Initially, that building was used for gas. So people who know that building, they know it as Elf Gas. My father, he is the one who introduced a company that was known as Elf Gas in the Eastern Cape, which was uh, the company that was coming from originally from France, but they were operating in Western Cape. So the guy he took them over this side. But uh, so to try and get the, the, the traffic in, you know, um, I had to, because a lot of people were coming to ask for gas, as soon as they saw doors were open, uh, they know the place for gas. 
So they kept on coming for gas instead of the batteries that I want to introduce. So I thought, okay, um, I do have access. Uh, let me also put gas here to try and help me with this battery thing that is not moving at all. So that is how things started. Um, basically, we have grown from then. Uh, now what we are doing, we are distributing uh, or helping out uh, small guys who are wanting to move into the industry because uh, the industry is, 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 is closed, still very, very closed. Uh, for, for, for a black person, uh, more especially from the township, getting into that space, the red tape there is, 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 is something else. But by the grace of God, I've been there for, for a while, so uh, I've managed uh, to maneuver my, uh, my way around to be able now uh, to help people who want to get into the industry. So basically, that's what we are mainly doing now. Uh, is to do e, 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 e distribution uh, or wholesaling as you were uh, for people who want to get into the industry. We are doing that not only up in, up in Tanzania or East London. Uh, people who are uh, within uh, the PCM, they come and collect. Uh, but we also do assist like people who are outside uh, because we also do have a footprint in PE and um, we are assisting people that side as well. So basically that's what we're doing now. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> and I think just my first takeaway, and I'm gonna be sharing my small nuggets and takeaways, is you know being able to take advantage of opportunities as they arise. You go in with this grand plan, situations sort of not necessarily change, but the opportunities that come up and you sort of take advantage of them. But now just tell me, um, you know, how has your, the entrepreneurial journey been? Or maybe just even before I ask that question, where, where, who taught you entrepreneurship? Is it something you got mentored in, you got taught in, um, or is it something that you've always had to be l learning as you moved along? And even if you had someone sort of teaching entrepreneurship in general, you know, what are some of the lessons you have had to learn yourself in uh, But I would say I was privileged enough that um, uh, my father, he is the one who is in the forefront in, the, in our family, who is in the forefront of a business. Uh, I remember uh, his first business, uh, uh, he started, I think it was early 80s, 82, 83, somewhere around there. Uh, he started uh, getting into a taxi uh, industry, um, but uh, soon he, he shifted into a shop. <coughs> sorry, he, sh he shifted into having e e e shops, and that's where he grew uh, Kakulu into the the supermarket bushery and those uh, kind of stuff. Uh, so I was exposed. Um, for the greatest part of my life in, in the business world in that manner because um, even if I was not involved in the administration or any sort of the business, but, you know, being exposed in, in customer service. Maybe, uh, Dundi, maybe please take this mic. So I, I think is it fine? So I, I think I think um, somehow the bug caught me whilst I was still growing up uh, unaware because uh, as soon as I finished my standard or grade 12, I desperately wanted to go into the corporate world after my tertiary uh, uh, education because um, I saw myself in a corporate world uh, I loved what was happening there, but uh, again, I think that was a that was a blessing for me because it opened up my you know my thinking capacity. Otherwise, I could have just uh, ended up having a spaza shop as well or a supermarket. But um, being exposed uh, into multinational companies, it 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 broadens my my thinking. So. Uh, that's how I got involved into business because even when I was uh, working, um, I think I could just see opportunities that were not offered 
with the company and I used to be very, very frustrated because uh, of the red tape within the, the, you know, when you are working for a big company, you can't just move things as you wish. Even if you see that, you know, they can bring in uh, results because at the end of the day, as a business person, you are looking for a bottom line. So those were things that frustrated me uh, from, from, from the corporate and um, I started my business uh, as I was working uh, because I saw opportunities uh, that were not uh, tapped. So I started working on them, doing what we know now as a side hustle. Uh, it was not fashionable then, uh, but uh, I did. And uh, th that drove me uh, to really, you know, throw in the towel. DT, I'm going all in. Yeah, bon. And um, I've been there. Yes, I've had many failures as well. Uh, and uh, like who put the tabang lobe teta or teko, um, I also went back after things were very, very tough, um, having things taken away and everything, you know. Um, so I went back uh, to a corporate world, but uh, this thing was uh, really in me because I, I, I couldn't last. Because I remember the last uh, place in the Kuya was supposed to be starting that day. That day I tendered my resignation letter. I didn't even, uh, it, was, it was really, really bugging me. You know, as the days were building up to the startup date, I, the level of stress and uh, so I just told myself that uh, I'm in this uh, for life and this is what I will do for the rest of my life. So you, so you tendered your resignation in the day on the day you were supposed to start work? Yeah. No, I think there's a record on that. <laughs> but I guess you know what? I mean, if the entrepreneurial bug has bit you, it's bit you, and I guess there's nothing you can do about it. But the biggest thing that sort of comes through for me there is expose yourself. Through exposure um, that Budandi is talking about, he was able to see gaps in various markets. So I think as a small business owner, um, it's important for you to expose yourself. And part of the ways to expose yourself is, you know, get onto uh, YouTube, get onto reading books, get onto networking platforms like this, get into other amazing platforms that they have in this amazing community and learn, you know, and learn because that's also a form of traveling without leaving your location. That's very important because, you know, one of the ways you grow and start is by doing that. But just tell me, you know, what were the, okay, before I talk about the low moments, but what were what are the thing what what are the things the thing or the people that have kept you going all of these years with the hardships, um, and then just on the back of that, what is the one lesson or two lessons you've learned that you've always kept to yourself? So, about Tibeni or whatsoever the case, this is the thing that comes up to you in your mind. So, uh, <clears throat> But I think one of the biggest lessons that have kept me true uh, that I've thought over uh, uh, over the years was um, I was taught, I think it was my father who taught me this lesson, that um, whenever you are facing a business challenge, in whatever decisions that you need to make, you must choose business. If you choose business, business will choose you back. Because... Um, in many cases. No, no, I think we need to give you a round of applause there because that is a powerful statement. Continue, sir, sorry to interrupt. Uh, because you find out in most cases, um, you know, your problems might not be uh, directly maybe to business. You might have a, a family business that uh, to you it will tie up into your, your business. For instance, um, you know, in, in a township setup, as a, as a business person, you find that the whole family, if maybe um, someone passed on and, uh, you know, they don't have anything, the first person they're going to start looking at is you, you know, uh, not knowing what is your bank balance or your business challenges and everything. So uh, that lesson of choosing a business, uh, to me, it came in a form that, you know, I always ask when people come to me uh, looking for more especially financial help, uh, even on myself in terms of disciplining myself now as a business person. 
before I do anything, I ask myself, if I didn't have this money, what was I going to do? So if there's a bereavement in the family, and uh, whoever, maybe the cousin or whoever relative, uh, they don't have money, and I didn't have money, what was going to happen? That is the solution to the problem you have, because the moment you come up with a solution to that, if I was not there, or if I didn't have this money, what were you going to do? That's exactly what you need to do. And by doing that as a business person, you must know you are choosing a business. Because it is very easy uh, to want to look good to your family, you know, impress people, friends, everyone else. But the moment you do that, you're taking money from a business that you're not supposed to be taking. Because if you're taking money from a business that is not business related, you must know you're not choosing business. You are choosing something else. And the business will cry for you. So, yeah, those are the things that I've, I've learned, and um, uh, I think they kept me going. I know um, talking is cheap because uh, once you start having money or once you start being exposed uh, in money, you would have uh, serious or relevant problems that are very much justifiable. Uh, and if, 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 you don't, if you don't have the mentality of choosing business over everything else, uh, you might really fall into traps that you were not supposed to fall into. So, yeah, I think that was the biggest lesson that I've learned. And um, as I've said, um, I've had a, a, a privilege of having a father who's been there in the forefront for me. So it's, it's always been easy as much as he's not the only person that uh, who have seen me through because uh, the challenges that I'm facing now are challenges that were not there then. So as much as he might be clued up, you know, but he will have some hiccups. So I always had to have, you know, relevant people at time, you know, that I can bounce ideas, uh, you know, like-minded people. Uh, so it's 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 always good. Uh, I think it also speaks to the heart of this um, gathering, uh, the collaboration and mentorship. Uh, it's it's very very good for an entrepreneur to always uh, have like-minded people around you, because they might not really have answers to your problems, but the hunger in them will speak to the hunger in you, and it probably because in some cases you find that the problems that we have, uh, we also do have the solutions within us as soon as you have a good recipient someone who opens up your your your, your thinking facility uh, you end up bringing up these uh, solutions yourself uh, so that is why it's good to have like-minded people if, if, even if they might not be in the same industry as you but if they've got the same hunger in, uh, in the uh, entrepreneurial spirit as you uh, because once you start uh, sharing an idea to that person, uh, he will connect. And when they connect and open up, uh, it also opens you up into finding your own solutions. Uh, guys, uh, guys, you're sleeping. It's either you're sleeping or you're like me because I'm here and these gems are dropping. I, I think we can close the panel. That's it. That, this is, because, you know, and, and that's why I always say, and I'll always say, like, nothing, nothing will ever replace the massive knowledge that one will get if we only just sit as small business owners and listen to those who've gone the journey. But not just those who've gone the journey, but umtu you are, that you are able to point to and say, I always pass by there. I know this person because there's a wealth of knowledge. I mean, it's over 18, 19, close to 20 years of business. And I think for me, it goes without saying that the gems are dropping. Like, thank you. Thank you. But for me, I, I just want to ask, you know, you're dropping amazing gems. Um, you know, some, you don't look like entrepreneurship is tough, but also it's never written on anyone's forehead. What have been whether you might remember or not, but what have been your low moments? Have you had a moment where you felt like, yo, or a situation that was tough that you had to navigate? And how did you sum up that courage to say, okay, in Betila, but 
I'm going to find a way, and the way it looks like this, and then their hands are left. Hey, uh, Budi, I've had many of those days. Uh, I've had many, many, many of those days. And I think to a certain degree now, uh, it's what I draw from, from those days. Uh, because remembering from the starting uh, days, uh, the old time uh, I, I would go home and say, look, now um, tomorrow is my last day. Business has, 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 has really uh, gotten me out, so I've got nothing else now uh, to do. Um, one of those uh, challenges that I've, I've, I've faced as a small business, uh, it was a robbery. Uh, you know, having breaking in your place because small businesses, more especially in the township, we don't have insurances to cover such things. And um, just imagine having all of your, um, your 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 capital, like everything that you have, is invested on what you are trying to grow. And then um, just a parallel village, a little figure, a little your whole. Uh, your your equipment, everything, and even the way they do that. because they don't just take land. you find them breaking windows, breaking things that had nothing to do with what they are stealing, and uh, you'll be left to go back when uh, and sort that mess out. Uh, those things were tough, Puti. Uh, those things were very very tough. Um, also, um, you know, having people that you identify in a township in your area, because where we are working, we are exposed to people's situation. You find out there's a, a home or someone um, who is not working and the, the background of that house is really, really struggling. And um, it's not good for you to just keep on giving bread. And, you know, uh, if there's someone who can come and help you, and then they can earn a little bit of something. At least um, you're giving them decency as well, you know, to to show up in their family and, and try and change their lives. But, uh, you know, at some times we tend to do those things blindly because you're thinking you are helping someone who might see what you are doing and you expose them into a lot of things and then you find yourself in a situation that, yeah, this guy has been looting. And in most cases, you know, uh, you tend to open up to the people that you work with so much that they, you know, if someone doesn't have a good intentions with you, uh, they, they would learn you. They will take time studying you, your weaknesses. Uh, when you'll be working here, you figure a day, man, um, I'm calculating my cost well, uh, my sales are in paper. Everything's supposed to be checking out, but where is this hole? And this person maybe might even come and assist you in checking the hole wherever he is the one who's creating the hole. So th those, those, those are the tough things that, uh, you know, as, as, as an entrepreneur, you, you go through. And uh, I don't know if there is a, a, a bulletproof around those things, that you can really close those things completely. You can try. But um, the mind of a man is, is, is something else. If someone uh, doesn't have the same heart as you and doesn't see uh, the same vision uh, as, a, as a leader of that uh, building, uh, man, you are in for a surprise. You, you are in for a surprise. So uh, one of the things that I've learned is that, and it helped me as well to navigate uh, through tough times, was to share my vision with the, with the people that I'm working with. Not just having meetings about, uh, you know, the, the coming in and the clocking off time and those kind of things, but sharing your heart, giving them, you know, the vision of what they are in and making them exactly understand that uh, this will go beyond each and every one of us. Because um, since the years that I've been there, I don't know how many people I had to fire. And Ace Gas is still there. And the way that Ace Gas has been built, even when I'm not there, uh, it will still be there. So uh, understanding that you are something bigger uh, than you, I think it does also change your mindset. 
because um, for me, I will not be there. My son will be there. So whatever I'm doing now, it's going to affect the tomorrow. The person that I'm employing now, if they are keeping, you know, into uh, doing everything that needs to be done, when they are not there, chances are I'm going to go to that family to go and look for someone else to come and stand. Or even if I don't go, but someone who comes from that family, you know, the person who's here now is paving a good name for the family. Because as soon as you come and saying, I'm from a certain uh, family in Balabala, everybody knows. Balabala, this one. So, you know, those are the doors money cannot open. Those are the doors that money cannot open. So, keeping up a good name, uh, I, I, I think those are one of the things in the, in the thing that they've kept me. You know, because I've managed uh, to have in my stuff, yes, I do have like people who, you know, even if you can try so much, but you know, you will always have those people. But um, I did also manage to have good people enough, you know, to, to buy into the vision and assist me, you know, because as an entrepreneur, as one of the speakers have said, yeah, you know, everything is about you. Everything rotates up, uh, around you as much as you cannot be everywhere. So you need people that, you know, they can buy into your vision and uh, try and assist you where you cannot be. No, no, I, I like that. I like that. Let's do it again. Uh, ace, ace guys, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, you guys watching online are missing out. Hey, the energy in Tanzania. Yo, the gems. How many people are picking up gems and lessons? Yo. I, I don't want to hog this moment. I have got way more questions in actual fact. But the people here, you've got questions. Questions around your business. Questions around challenges, comments. This is the moment for us to engage and chat. I mean, I've learned a lot. But this moment is not just about me. But this moment is about us. And also, but just for me, as a, as a personal compliment to everyone in the room, I appreciate how everyone is just in this moment. You know, and I feel it, and I hope it is so. So I'm just going to ask the technical guys just to prepare a mic. But also, if you're going to come and ask a question, may I please ask that you stand on the side of the room, just in that section over there. So if you've got a question, please just raise your hand. Okay, we've got the gentleman there. I've got the lady at the back. I've got the gent there in the cap. I've got you, sir. Is there anyone else? Okay, I've got the lady here. Maybe the first four. If I'm just as a please, please, as a big plea, or do we can we move the mic to them or have them come in front? What works better? I had buzzing Or we can move the mic. Oh, yeah, no, the technical guy is saying. Uh, a stage. Yo, yo, come, yo, stage. Stage is fine. No? Oh, come to the stage. I don't have a problem. But you know what you must do? What I'm going to ask that you do, no, guys, is when you get the mic, come to the front. But as you are coming, I'm, as you are coming, so take the opportunity to, to tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Bulelani. I run a company that sells one, two, three. My question, my one question, not two, not three, is one, two, three. We've got two. I'm bad. Do you want to come up? Come up. You could, you could. Ah, uh, leave same, leave same. Hey, peer pressure. Uh, thanks, Putnan, for the moment. Thank uh, you, sir. My name is Samkela Chobela, uh, a founder of Sam Grills uh, in Scenery Park. Um, what we do, we do sandwiches, burgers, ikota, loaded chips. We compete with Spurs, Deers, McDonald's, you name it. To Oprah Ace, to what he has said uh, first, he said that if you cannot um, have that uh, emotional stability where you can, you can, when someone comes in and says, I can't believe 100 rand because we're in business, uh, can't pay a family member, he has a problem, like if bending echo up, what would you have done? 
And then my question is, how do you deal with that emotional dilemma? Uh, to say, I'm doing it, okay, and now, but they know you just made a sale right in front of them. How do you deal with that? I, I, in essence, with the support that you'll get after that, after what you just said. Because, Ekas, we have this mentality that when you are in business, you have money. And then people come and ask for money from you every day. And then once you start saying no, the support decreases. Now, how do you deal with that? How did you deal with that for the past 18 years that you've been in business? And secondly, um, the question around e e e human capital in your, in your business, in the first stages of your business. How, did you, how were you able to deal with that? Because that is the issue that I'm facing in my business currently, that I cannot have any reliable person in the business to, say, to, to see the vision and to hear the vision. How were you able to connect with your, with your people that you had in your business to be in this, in this vision that you have? Thank you. Please watch your step, Mr. Sam. The best grill house, ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake. Um, the questions are to you, sir. Um, you can take it and then, so I think in terms of the flow, um, we'll ask a question, then you can answer. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, answering your questions, Puti, um, I think what we, we, we ought to, to understand as business people, uh, you can never make a business decision uh, with emotions. So business decisions are not emotional decisions. Um, you can count 100,000 yap in front of someone who comes and looking for 10,000 rand. Uh, if when as a business person you are not disciplined enough to understand that 100,000 is not even your money, you can't even buy a can of coke from that money. That money needs to go to your suppliers so that tomorrow your business can still be alive. If you, if you don't understand that, because look, here's my take. You know, a person who knows that they can get something from you, they might not get it now, but the mere fact that you are still around and still have the capacity to give them something tomorrow, they will find their way back to you again. They will always do. Uh, they might not like your, 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 your answer now of saying, no, you don't, whilst you are busy counting in front of them. Uh, but the fact that tomorrow you will still be here, they will go and badmouth you and do whatever it is that they, 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 they can do against the decision that you have made. But uh, you need also to, 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 to be mindful of the fact that the decision that you have made you have saved your business because in most cases, people who like to do that, they don't even support our businesses. That same person, when they have that same 100 rand, they, when they were uh, coming and looking for that 100 rand from you, when they have their own 100 rand that you didn't give them, they will go and buy a spare or STS or whatever. You know, so, so that is why I'm saying you need to be very careful when you are making a, a business decision. Don't mix business decision with emotions. Uh, just another typical example, you know, there are times where in business you might find yourself having to sell your product or be in business in some way or another that is favorable for the business, but for you, Let's say as you grow up, uh, someone who took a cherry or what, 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 and you hate this guy with passion, and now he comes uh, with a good deal to you. What do you do? You ignore that guy because what had the cherry five years ago? <laughs> you know, th those those are emotional decisions that you know they are very bad for business. So those are the things that you 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 need to 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 be matured enough as a business person to swallow your pride. Uh, as I've said before, if you choose your business, your business is going to choose you. So if you, if you are able to mature in those cases of saying no to someone who's coming to look for money and they're finding you in a bad position, counting money, uh, knowing when about now because you know that I'll now. So if you can't say no, you know that you are setting up yourself for a failure. So secondly, uh, your second question, yeah, having to sell your, your vision. 
It is not an easy thing to do, Budi. Uh, it is a struggle that I've, I've had for, for many years, but uh, I don't stop doing that. How do I do that? Uh, as I've said, I do have time. You know, when it's quiet, we're sitting around doing nothing. Uh, people who are around you, sometimes people, they don't ask you questions because they don't know how to ask these questions. Not that they're not interested, but they don't know even how to start. They're seeing you, you are this big person now, you've got a business, what not, what not. They would like to know how did it start it. But they don't know like how to process such questions. So as a leader, because we have to understand that as a business person or as an entrepreneur, you are a leader. You are a game changer. That's who you are. So it is up to you that when you have those quiet times, you need as a leader to find something creative or something that will be productive to that time. Sharing such information of uh, sharing information about your background and how your business started, uh, you know, you are opening up that person into uh, the new level of thinking, because they might be in the same situation you were before you started your business, but they don't even think that it's possible to break from the situation they are in. You know, but you exposing them that look, I was working there in the Kobe Trolliga Pig and Pay and the Kapaban Dubai Kwela Mapela, the Kayonga Five Run and all of those things. But you know, explaining them your passion and what drove you, that bug would, would go into those people. They might not get everything that you are telling them, but at least that deposit, that seed. Uh, as, as you do that day in, day out, you know, as and when you find time, that seed will grow even in them. And when someone is about to do something wrong in your business, you know, knowing that, hey, this guy, uh, hey, he had a tough uh, studying this thing. Now when we are figuring, no, we can't do that. You are not there. Now this person is standing for you because you have shared uh, your seeds with them. So those are the things that you can do. Otherwise, you, you can't really uh, have a mechanical way of changing a person into, into being a good employee. Thank you I, so I much. I think I've answered you, Budina. Thank you, sir. Sam, good. Sissy? Ah, if you, you can stand there. No. No, the mic. Uh, Petunia, the mic. No, no, take this one, please. Molweni, uh, my name is Tikunati. I'm a nail tech um, up in Tanzania, and I provide e solutions to e beauty, um, hand and feet and massages as well. So I, I feel like coming from there, who's up and now, the question has already been answered because it was um, rotated around isn't to put us buzileo, but. Um, to, to ask again, can I book you for a session? <laughs> 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 My first client from ETEA. <laughs> a free session. Yeah, I know I'll call you, you for that tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can't talk from there. But that's how you do it. Now, while you are giving the session, you are getting free nuggets. Yeah, strategy. Hey, yes, girl. Hey, <laughs> um, lady, um, my lady, please. Oh, the gentleman. Okay, okay. You, you are here, sir. Oh, you can come up. Do you want to come up? Are you grand, okay? Hey, Taya, you grand? Sure, I am. Who's it? I am grand. Man, don't you forget your wife and Sapangeli la lendo program to ask wifea. Eh, upa ashe mas pata ga ashe mas tengela niyam. Koko grand. Eh, excuse me, Mnanza. Take this toss and go toss and go touch on that. Yeah. Eh, Janamna, the Gui Farming, but the IT, the graduate, and the span very much equipped out. Hence, I only learned the graduate and the span of companies as good meter twenty four and so forth. Ebrahim, Kauchoman, Madubule, the car, we remote, Gumdomni, so he will car. And the Ogos process for Kalayo, Wanga, Tiko, Abutu, Nebra, Nengambiak. And the light ya akubawa na ilaiti ilande lekondo ininga inga chai stop. 
Yeah, I landed the conduit, must tell the Gekamalingus. Eh, hot man, Utilisha Nanja, Nimana, Nabandu, the female, because I think Una, you female. And then nobody in Bozo, I'm Simula Napake, must call Utilisha Nanja, Nabandu, the female, Abasolo, Kobe, Chonke, Kue, Katasha Long. Two. Utilisha njani no mtu utu umke. She'll see if you must can, can make you crazy. It's just a paper mostly. Yeah. It can make you crazy. See if you umdu fanze kwa inche njani. But it deliverance. Ay, ya nanaze. So, utilisha njani nendu nendu wazi njani alo khutmani yamu. Because utu survive hili ndi agova ndi kabu inganga inganga eketile. Mm. But cause not ebele ni usuka kwa time. Yeah. yeah. So, inganga eketile. So, it hili ndu pra waza njani. <laughs> and goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, thanks, Bodhi. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, your first question, uh, I think it's similar, Gulena, ABC Tetap, but I think yours, it can be addressed in a manner that um, it is also important as an entrepreneur to, to shape your business uh, in a professional way such that you have a salary. You know, uh, because if family, are, look, you, you can never wrap them off or you can never not have family. You can never not have people who might depend on you. Uh, for me, I believe that, you know, so for you as a blessing, you must know that you will have those kind of people. So, we must do a business and each. So we are yaz in Dubai no kind of nalo laba band to buy a family yak. So I'll finish again with being at our yaz land to buy one kind of laba band. So what you need to do as a person who knows your background and your situation as a business person, you need to cater for it today, for tomorrow. Because we are yaz most business here, Congo, Kwaku, we plan here, is to have this business for 10 years or 20 years or whatever years that you, you are wanting to. So, for you, uh, understanding your background, you need to cater for those things. That's why I'm saying, is salary, uh, I mean, Ngo Kwale question, yako, I think is the solution. Because if you are not salaried and you won't know when you are crossing the red line. And that is a danger to your business. Uh, so, so, so uh, that's what I think uh, you need to do. Uh, so that kai peli lima liyako yomkholo, kwazi ubai peli le. And I yikwe nindo kengo nawe ube disciplined enough uzazi ndoba ubai peli le le imali ko kapitek and ina yoke nindo kengi mali ako kwe nindo mali nzapi na bena yu. Eku FNP net peng what not I touch wale yoye business. Uh, what was the second question again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. oh I think um, hey, Budwam, that is also very tricky, but I think that's where the probation period comes in. Uh, if you employ someone, as much as they have a, you know, a very impressive CV, uh, if Mkambi Ubunga Baniga the probation period, I think it's about time that you start doing that. Uh, I know in Doba Mtu Mkambi Uza Wakfunuk Impressa in that three months. Uh, and then as soon as Babi Kaila and they, they are signed in permanently, it's going to be a different story. But this uh, in Doba City, you know, there's no mechanical way of, of fixing those things. This uh, is that you just have to maneuver, you know, and if really they are a pain into your business, you try and find a way, you know, to get them out of your business. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Ma'am, uh, our fourth question there, and our fifth one, yeah. Okay, hi. Um, I am a mental one. health practitioner. Um, so I think my question shall be we are why pendula somehow, but I think I wanted to ask you about sustainability because we talk a lot about starting businesses and in the Nibona is that when we do start these businesses, we lack the sustenance. So I wanted to ask you around that, like what is your drive when it comes to sustainability? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Siswam. Thank you. Um, my take on that answer, uh, Sisi, 
I think Uputeko did touch into it. Uh, for me, uh, I believe when you're studying a business, it is very, very important to have a vision, a clear vision to you, Gengoku. And, and I'm not talking about the e vision and mission statement. I'm talking about where you see this thing and you know how far do you want to see it go. The way you see it, to me, it will influence most decisions that you are going to make. Because, uh, you know, for me, I've, I've learned that not every opportunity that comes my way is my opportunity. For instance, I'm sitting here, and you are theater, and you find that, you know, uh, this guy has got a lot of experience. Here's another opportunity for him. If my vision is not clear enough about what I'm doing, I might probably see uh, some, because it, it, it's good to give people opportunities, or it's always good to get other business opportunities as a business person, you know, for you to grow. But if you are not clear about your vision, you won't uh, take uh, clear decisions in terms of how you sustain your business going forward, meaning how to partner with people or even, even, even how to expand your business. Because my business is uh, clearly mine is expanding in a township. I've had many calls to go uh, a town and whatnot. Uh, I help them with Hoban Kwazuban Netang and let them go. My main focus is in a township. So as much as I can see the great potential in money that comes from that stream, but uh, I know it has nothing to do with, with what I want ASCAS to be or what I want ASCAS uh, to, to, to go as forward. You know, so I think for me to answer you, you need to be clear about the vision. Not as I'm, as I'm saying, not clear vision, but for you, be very, very clear about the vision. And also, I think, um, have a hunger of what you're wanting to do. Because la hunger, to me, it's the one uh, that motivates you when there's no one to motivate you. That hunger is the one that makes you to go through fire because there are times like that. Life of an entrepreneur is a very, very tough life. Uh, people who just see you wearing, you know, you wigs as in and what are driving beautiful cars, but uh, when they are busy sleeping there, be, be crover and whatnot, when you in clock, you know, there are times like that. So it's that hunger in you, you know, wanting to go forward that I think also helps. Uh, to sustain the business. Thank you. Thank you, my lady. Malopet. Um, I run a fragrance shop called Ikola the Scent. I usually have social anxiety, you know, so I might speak a bit fast. So yeah. Um, but my biggest aim in my business, I'm always focusing on customer service and client retention, and I think. Um, especially within the black economy, it's very difficult for a lot of businesses to be able to continue because they are unable to retain clients. So I want you to touch upon that because I've seen you operating for quite a number of times and um, I've seen how you are with people just in general. And I think this is something that a lot of us are not groomed on. Airways, yeah, I understand, but we need to run these businesses but we do not know how to sustain and retain the people that we have. So what is your take as your business, as a person that's been operating for such a long time, and as a person that I personally have experience with, what is your take and what do you teach your employees as well as people that are coming into your business about this? Because it's your clients that are making a scarce go. Yeah. You have the, the, the deliveries, but then what focus do you have when in terms of client retention. So can we please touch upon that? Okay. Uh, I, I think I've got two uh, ways I would like to answer that. Um, one, there's an exercise that I normally do. Uh, I don't know whether to call it an introspection or introspection of a business. Uh, there's a method uh, that is called a SWOT analysis that you do for a business. Uh, I do that a lot. And there's one question 
uh, that keeps me awake when I've I've managed to do that. Thank you, Helen. The thing I do, but now is cases here operating. Go for operating. What is it that Tagono Figubule Lane is going to back with all the money that he has? I figure Zoyenzem Tanzania in the same industry that will take me out of business. What is it that the next person that can come into my market and take me out of business? That is a solution for you. Tomorrow morning, you have to wake up and do exactly or fight your way towards that until you reach a point where you think that, look, there's no one who can come and do anything. And then you must know that is your roof because it is not possible that there's no one who's going to come and do something extraordinary more than what you're doing. So I would like to answer, how do you retain customers uh, and, and how do you grow? Uh, you, you need to, because as, as a business person, more especially if you are interacting with your customers, you, you, you get to understand them. You get to understand the culture, you know, you build the culture of the business, you understand, you know, the customers that you are attracting. Uh, so when you, you, you are paying attention into your customers and learning their behavior and you know how they, they you know, what kind of people you are serving, you'll be able to, to, to tap into those ideas. Like, okay, this guy, they keep on, so how do I, you try and figure your, your, your way around those things. And as soon as you find those, uh, uh, those, those, those solutions, those are the things that you need to implement in your business. Uh, in, in, in the years I've, I've been in business, uh, in the case, because I've done a number of businesses, uh, I've done uh, most of them. I don't even remember this Kunduzo on a band because that's a life of a, of an entrepreneur. You know, you 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 know, Zimbabwean is does the attractive jazz. You go along, going, hey, I want to try this thing. I want to try. You try those things. As I've said that, you know, those are the lessons that taught me that not every opportunity is my opportunity. But uh, as a person who's an entrepreneur, there are parties and jazz, and you want to go into those things. Uh, so I figure that, you know, as an entrepreneur, another thing that you must not be allergic in, 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 in is thinking. <laughs> you must not be allergic in thinking. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, culture, but it's a microwave culture. Everyone is wanting everything, convenient, something. You know, you, you, you're looking for instant solutions. But uh, as an entrepreneur, I think it's in the best interest of your business to make sure that you take time because every step that you go through in your business, you must know that you have wasted time if you haven't learned anything. If you have go through a certain uh, phase in your business without you having learned nothing, you have wasted time. So in that process of learning from what you have gone through, uh, you, you need to you know, you, you need to employ your mind to think beyond uh, a scope. I think it also uh, speaks to a vision, Yaku. Yeah, because w when you are thinking outside of the box, you won't just gallivant around, but you, 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 at least your thinking will be, you know, will be designed in a certain fashion that will, will, that will help you to sustain your customers. Let's give a round of applause. So, no, so we've got two more questions. The gentleman, gentlemen, there. It's two o'clock. We're running out of time. Ah, so many people want to ask questions. Hey, surprise. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm Sherry Nuggets, bro. Sure. Hey, I'm Alam Dingbandi. I am a founder of uh, IL Remedy, a colleague for Remedy. He has a play to be I have a question or two. Uh, I heard you talk about uh, paying you a salary. How do you then, uh, I don't want to say avoid, but there is SARS. SARS, if he's taxing you as a person, Ace, and also is taxing your business, it's affecting you both. So how do you play around such? And then uh, there's something that says to me, you must be reading books. Please share one book that uh, makes you the leader that you are today. 
so that I can go and read it as well. Shwadlim <laughs> Kulwa, uh, thanks, man. Uh, about reading books, I, I yes, I do read, but here, bro, I don't even read enough to finish one book, but uh, as and when I have time, you know, I, I read one or two books. Um, but getting to Lena in Togasa's text and whatnot, your salary, uh, in your business, you are an employee of your business. So your tax issues is the same as the next person in your business. Business taxes, VATs and whatnot, those are business issues. So there's no way USAS, Ungati, Mkhambi, I'm trying to put Ngolkabolo, but these things are two, they are separate things. You are taxed, income tax, on yourself, in your salary, and you need to do vet returns or e tax returns on that. And then Lena Ingapa also goes in Gelayayo. Yes, it's money coming from the same business, but it should be money that is calculated that even like a salary, you can't say uh, because it turned over now it's uh, 2 million. Now, you can't say that it's 200,000. You know, those things uh, communicated with your accountant, they can recommend uh, the salary for you. Uh, if Mkambi, you don't have a bracket that you would like to us. In most cases, I think we tend to be soft to our businesses mm. in a manner that uh, you just want to cover your costs so that your, pre your business can breathe, can be fine, and then from, you know, being able to cover your cost, other cost around, uh, if you are a vet vendor, uh, you tend to take some things, because when you buy things as a vet vendor, you know that you, you, know, they, they, you won't pay vet on them. So, these are things probably I'm not supposed to be saying, but yeah. Uh, if you want to buy things, it's a same thing. I'm not sure if this is... <laughs> yeah, but yeah, all, all in all, Putwam, I think uh, to, to, to be safe, I think you need to speak to your accountant. I, I think you need to speak to your accountant. Uh, but as is in, they should not really be mixed. Yeah, bon? they, 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 they should not be mixed. But then, is not going to... Uh, as more tax to you simply because you have a business. On a personal tax, they will pay. They, they will tax you a uh, bracket your income tax that you are paying yourself in, and then if, if business now it will pay its own. So, um, can be trying to find your ways around those things. I think your accountant is the best person. Hey, buddy. Kulo di buddy sene. Ah, lote ta imbusha lo kabuzani. Apo kwa nemi Tanzania ngasim zomli. Um, but German Milek and Melanga Mnando to see Ku, the Malay organization, Nikton, Cassie Conversations. So basically, ITA in Yogba, um, I'm one of the recipients of funding NYTA, CIFA as well. But uh, one thing I've realized is that it's psychological impact as he thinks of one of them. Yam, Sikuleti Naimali, Umakwazi discussing him, Kwae Salari, Yaz Mama Kupayam Duni, etc. Right. So, that the Western world was able to capitalize on that because it means that informal economy is to Yeah. Then the research, the government of Washington, they are paying a separate check in. Abu Gonzu in talk on Ambuza Mama. How many copies you went in talk using up? I mean, what time then I'm saying was five hundred up. You understand? That was the one sell, but okay, you're a vague, sorry. So, if five hundred get vague, I'm a color eight thousand. That yeah. gives you about forty five thousand rand. Um, um, a week yeah. in turnover and got it again, a cost and whatever. Yeah. Now, in business, I can't branding, I can't do any. So it speaks to how how vibrant we are as an informal economy. Ungu umdu, otu ngo 26 yocho, ngo 2023, you have found liquid cash in um, le, 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 le market to kuyo. So my question is, how can we find a way to manage um, uh, from a management perspective, how can we find a way to organize ourselves so that Sikwazi who says numbers to the play? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Baunga highway alone. 
I will go to the theater and go to pick. Yeah, I'm by a flyer, you know. Um, I'm a lot things orange. Yeah, I'm by a flyer. But where are those numbers? So I want to find out from you as an entrepreneur. Um, on whom could you go to the Gulf man access? Could you must ask us and could you pass quick? Um, but how can we find a way to centralize those information? Ne, that's one. And two, how can we facilitate intergenerational dialogue? It could be because once of event, le, is our arm. Yeah, bo. Uh, be nice. It's been as long as in, and I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm very grateful for NetBank for coming here, also in T, because this is an activation basically from a marketing perspective. But now systematically, how do we create change? And I think in Oguiza, in Pendulo, Nani, Bakuluba, sing and fuman quest platform car, you know, but to avail yourselves, Tasquas and Biza, Oguti, okay, Mkulua, we want to facilitate, come to home, Mkulam, next week, Wednesday. So, from my lap, as entrepreneurs, best lap, how can we devise systematic change in Tanzania? How do we see that? We see slow in the tech, it's about from an early space, Sabon, and Zumzegel, about cooperating, and Abanda Batabin, well, but in the Zumzegel. Yeah, yeah, well, just from my fingers. Thanks, Putin. Well, Mkulu, I think uh, the only way, man, it is to uh, just do it. Yeah, one. Uh, for me, and 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 now you need to learn uh, You need to print flyers. You need to do what, whatever it is that you need to do to start activating because those things are much needed. The, the mentality you are talking about, Mzegelo uh, Lewins Lewa was for checks in. It it will be very difficult for us now. To change their mentality, let them their mass and let them cool. Yeah, bon. So even going to the phone and whatnot, those things are foreign to him. But now this is the generation that is woke enough to understand that. Look, there's money that is flying around in the township that is not seen in the township. So as this generation, how do we try and retain that money? You know, so so one thing you need to do, you need to use whatever it is that is in your device, social network, everything possible. Start, I think the main will be just to start. We can be singing a fumanigi song about the Bafuna and Galkosova Funangalo, but as you progress, as you keep on pushing, because this is much needed, put it. This is. This is really, really needed. But the life of an entrepreneur as well, Senjwa Unga Biko, you know, when you, when you not find the people that you are always looking for. Because, um, as you know, uh, e-businesses, they, they are shaped, as I've said before, that everything rotates around you. So, when you take time, for an hour, you a business in yako. You know, there's just a lot. So it's not always easy for us. So I'm trying to say you, you need to persevere in doing that. As a person who, who has that idea, uh, I would encourage you. Um, personally, I would love to be around those kind of, uh, you know, events uh, because we are sharing ideas and those are the things that we, we, we really love because we're finding solutions in problems that we cannot even know how to ask them. The mic. Ah, this has to be the last one because we must... Ah, guys. Ah. The mic? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Utia for organizing the event, spoiler no organizers, about the organizing events. I'm really, really, we really need such uh, initiatives. And I, I had my colleague, the ACT, probably this is, this is a once off, but see, I tell you, I'm coming up in Isa again because we need these type of engagements so that we really build a culture of entrepreneurship. And Sabrina uh, Rakul, to bring Mr. Ace for taking it. Uh, as a part, in fact, when I didn't even know what to Mr. Ace. Ace case is one business as why I'm Tanzania, but I never knew the, the person behind the Ace the, the, the case. So I'm really, really uh, grateful and honored to have met uh, Mr. Ace. Uh, and I'm thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ace, uh, in the way, I'm going to be obviously pregnant. We understand. So, so at a stage, we are taking the to see, see, bring her to the world. Yeah, I understand. Joma see bring her to this world. We are understand there's always a chance to in our land. So once if we be so good to say because there are two things that you are worried about as as we start uh, 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 going into business. 
one of these one of the things of a customer how do we attract customers because businesses yeah, to, for us for it to to survive and to grow we require customers so climate kind of strategy around that and and also about e e e funding because those are the two things as we worried about as the CCCCC startup going forward. And then last question uh, would be on issue of, we've been in the game for 18 years. 18 years. I don't know what I said. I can imagine this thing for 18 years. It's not a joke. So how if you want to be great in it, how do you keep on motivating yourself? 18 years young, you understand? Because it's, it's not easy. You understand? I'm, I'm, I don't have big experience on entrepreneurship, but so yeah, I just wanted to ask those questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I think most of your questions have been answered here before. Um, when it comes to issues of funding, you need to create your business in a format that it will be funding ready. Um, if you know that you're going to need funding for your business, you don't know what you're going to need. It's high time now, as you know that you're going to need business. Approach, yeah, the bankers, yeah. Approach them. Exactly, stage is a business, and counting uh, funding, a certain amount of funding. What is it that they would require from you? You start working from there. Uh, I think the other thing, how do I make it? I think, Putwam, uh, this thing, as Babeke watch some of the speakers, You've managed to prove everything. Uh, on the Saturday, waza waza It means this thing is in you, because I've I've came across people that love the idea of business. They are not they are not business people. But corner bandu who just loving the idea because they see certain people you know driving cars, what not, what not. Uh, they don't know how to really cook uh, the pot. Uh, so. For me, I would say I, I am by nature, it's my calling. It's something that is in me. Because wherever I go, uh, I happen to see business opportunities. You know, I, I, somehow it just comes. And I think this is, this is the grace of God that is upon my life to be able to live uh, uh, such a life that, you know, and for you uh, to go through things and persevere and even be successful. Because by the way, to me, e success is 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 personal. What 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 is success to you to me is nothing. So when you are clear about your vision, as I've said, when you are building your business you would know when you are successful. So when, when you are clear on your vision, your vision and your hunger will drive you forward until you get into your own success. Because as much as we love the idea of having each head, cinema, McLaren and whatnot and whatnot, Mkambi says, and all the big guys, for me, I'm not really interested in IT in a private jet. In seven Zem Tanzania, my business is here, in the township in rural areas. So, what the hell am I going to do? Not that, not that I'm not that ambitious, not that uh, having a private jet is not a, a, a good thing. I would love to see myself there, but that is, you know, that is not aligned with my vision now in the business that I'm, that I'm building. I'm small-minded, but uh, I'm just being honest and realistic. Yeah, because sometimes having ideas of South Africa, don't, 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 in 10 years' time, don't, there's just a lot, you know, I need to start in Tanzania, and I have it, you know, and control it tightly and have every strings possible as in Tanzania, so that the way that I've managed to run in Tanzania, Yes, but it's a one bang and you chem tat. And if eventually in the bend the Yongi Eastern Cape and they won't be easy to move to other provinces. So to answer you, Priam, just make sure that your vision is clear enough to you and you have the drive for what you want you to do. So but can I ask that you be the last, please? We will ask him after uh, some people are hungry, buzzers buffet. Uh, just one in the
You want to comment? You don't want to ask. You're going to give him a nice compliment. Okay. I'll allow you with the compliment after this gentleman. But sir, one question, pitch announcement, we eat. Then you can ask. Okay. No problem. My name is Unati Bogolo Pistoli, known as Uchawe. The, co yeah, the cold makes asphalt distributor and the medical equipment distributor. I'm a self-millionaire, hey. mate. Yeah. I am the 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 Tanzania. I'm about thirty-four. What? Now this old comment, Angie. You know this old this old theater again. Daba, you go to indeed the ufundu duofa. I've 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 learned from my brother here, who is, and I want to thank you for that, Putwam. Learn the ability put your business first. Big lap of been better con. Just one million zams lucky gib. There's in better land now. Can put your business first. So I want to comment you on that and always be the pick up. Let's lead to this township. Thank you. That's that, that's a good one. So the lady wants to share a comment. Then we get into the last part. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, hello. My name is Yolanda Janine. Uh, the Shalapem Tanzan, the Kulapem Tanzan, the Ramba no Timos, the nail technician. I just, I don't want to ask something, Price. Ne? Kaben Funugut, Kuku is status, Kobotata Apane, Sati, this is a once of thing. Ne? Digi founder. And we are current directors of Zim Tanzania United Against Crime and Violence. This is something that we are working on. Nati, we have exchanged uh, contacts. We will be in communication with him. So, the Cecilia Councillors, they have received the, 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 pro, the project very well. So this won't be the last one. It is the first one, but it won't be the last one. Thank you. Ah, uh, Mara. She tricked me. So where's the compliments? <laughs> Susan? No, where's the compliments? Give the compliments. No, give the compliments. No, it's a compliment. When it's a comment, that's a compliment. It's a nigga. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Upra Isme because he has inspired uh, more people as by a Chumana. I get how um does it hurt business? Yeah, can eh? But back home, I bando abata ikes. But it's as the nineteen as far as I buy. So he has uh, he has brought um Tanzania up. Lendo kanya sefunu ibona na tisefunu yanza want to reactivate economy alafya um Tanzania. And he is a job. He he is a job creator for wonge um to not not for under thirty five years, but for wonge um wonge um to alafya masi is a job creator ne. That's why we have to involve the NYTA to create those jobs for Arabanya Bandu and bring see 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 like you see from the to be independent in a business way. Sing at Indobana and Laba Unga Fundanga when you don't have those opportunities to work. See as Bana, we use our brains. We be being innovative. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's so many more questions, but we can't. I'd like to just say uh, thank you so much. Sure, you know, I met this uh, I met this amazing gentleman years ago when we did work here. Yeah. Done quite a bit of work here, yeah, but not in groups. Um, we came here, we did something, brought some clients here, we paid here. Yeah. Uh, met the owners a couple of times here. Yeah. I met this amazing gentleman. We did something else. It was nice. Then we did something again. We can't talk about it, but we did some nice things. <laughs> Business related, money related, but and 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 but also you know just for me, your character, your values, your your persona, you know stands and it speaks volumes in the amazing young people that are here, but also in the community that's saying that we've seen you, your consistency, you showing up, and but most importantly, what stands out for me as well is 
you you know you're a very focused leader you've been very diligent in executing the task of seeing your vision and your dream through and that in and itself is is a story for the days so the big thing i always say for me is our our sort of collective view in anything that we do is build your people support and hold on hmm? oh. so for me it's to say build the very own people because there's no mark zuckerberg here there's no elon Musk here this is your andy not your elon Musk. that's not how the reference is made you don't make that reference that way. You make the reference the other way around when you run into Elon Musk and you say, you are my Andil. Because this is where you draw the diagram and the methodology for how you do things. You can't do it the other way around because those methodologies work, but they work back to a point. Because there's certain dynamics. And also, you read the room and the questions that were asked. Those dynamics are purely... The dynamics are purely for black and African people and it's an African problem and it can't be solved by any other book. So for your time, your counsel, your knowledge and don't say we never appreciate you. Nancy massage so you for me up and uh, yeah but also don't give uh, too much information <laughs> But guys, thank you so much. I mean, did you guys enjoy that? Um, and if you enjoyed that, don't just keep it to yourself. Tell him. Because one of the things that we created this platform for is celebrate your own people. Just let the celebration not be in a corner, in, Lini, in your thoughts, in distance. Go onto their Facebook page, write it. Go to the company's Facebook page, share it. And write those comments. Because that's one of the best things that, in my view, one of the best things that you can do. So that let the person know. Let the person know where they stand with you. And let the other communities that are out there also know. And then after that, you can keep it to yourself and mull and think about it. But thank you, thank you so much. And we've got this uh, gift we've gotten from the exhibitors. We'd like to give it to you. Um, thank you so much, sir. Let's give him a round of applause. And then I've got the photographer who wants to take a picture. Photographer. or well, the photographers there. I just come in the center. So yeah, Motli Shangoku. Um, okay. Just turn to the left. Okay, the right. Okay. Just stretch out. Okay, smile again. No, it's on Bawila chat fell in the in the direct land. Um, okay. Yeah, perfect. Are we good? Yeah. Ah, perfect. Thank you so much. Let's give uh Braes and the good round of applause. Yeah, let's do that one. It is. Hey.